Okay, good morning everybody. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at some concepts uh, relating work and energy and also talk about power. And I'm going to go uh, a little fast through some of these slides because they are review um, and you always can pause the uh, video at any time to see the slides at, length, at, at the length that you desire. So remember that work, we talked about work before, and it's a concept that um, a force is moving something. Uh, parallel to the application of the force. So if the force is moving to the right and the object moves to the right, the work done is just the product of the force and the distance that it moves. Um, you'll also recall that the unit of uh, work is the joule, which also happens to be the unit of energy. So work really is energy in the sense that when you do work on something, you are expending energy to move or displace an object. So if, and in this particular example here, if a student lifts a 50-pound ball four feet in five seconds, you know that the force times the distance would be 200 foot-pounds, or 50 pounds times 4 feet. There's also a conversion, it's not a psi unit, um, that's the amount of work foot-pounds, but in joules, this amount of work would actually be, um, if we converted each of those to force and, uh, sorry, newtons and meters, we would get 271 joules. Now, don't worry too much about the conversion, because these conversions are on your formula sheet, uh, but this number here, this 271 joules, will be used a little bit later on in this presentation. Now keep in mind that energy is the ability to do work. Energy can take multiple forms, such as that of light, heat, mechanical, chemical, and electrical forms of energy. All of these can be used to exert a force over some distance. Potential energy is one example of this. Potential energy is gravitational as an example, but really it's the potential for work to be done. So in all of these pictures, you can see that there's potential for work, such as the oil pipeline, such as the fact that this helicopter is above at a height so it can drop something that has gravitational potential energy. This coal can be burned for uh, to uh, create heat, and that, of course, can turn turbines, boil water, etc., etc. So all of these are all examples of potential energy. Whereas kinetic energy is energy that's in motion. Now, you're going to uh, hear a concept, very straightforward concept, that energy uh, is often converting between forms, one form to another. So a lot of that potential energy that you would gain from, say, at the top of a roller coaster would be converted entirely to kinetic energy after it reaches the bottom of the hill. So if at the top of the hill there's 500 joules of potential energy, when it reaches the bottom there's going to be 500 joules of kinetic energy. Oftentimes, energy is transforming between forms. As an example, chemical to kinetic, such as when we eat our food and then we play a game. Radiant from the sun into chemical energy, such as when we have natural gas, coal, and oil. Obviously, those take mul multiple millions of years to do, but that's okay. And electrical and thermal energy. So, a lot, and these are all just basic examples. Those are, there's a, quite a few more examples. Um, we've talked about renewable energy resources, but here's a quick reminder of some of those renewable energy sources that we have. And here's a quick reminder of some of the non-renewable sources that we have. Now, we're going to see uh, in class a video, and I'll also link it on Google Classroom, that demonstrates the conservation of energy. Um, we'll explain that you know, you're not going to create, quote unquote, create energy unless you add it from something else. Also, energy that's quote unquote lost to heat is sort of an undesirable outcome. For example, an incandescent light bulb. When you turn on an incandescent light bulb, it uses uh, uh, power, sorry, energy at a rate of 60 joules per second, which is power, and we'll talk about that in a second, um, 60 joules every second that it's on. However, only two of those joules, about, are actually used to generate light. The other 58 joules are quote-unquote lost due to, uh, due to, or to heat, uh, just the, by the nature of the way an incandescent light bulb works. They're very inefficient, only about 5% efficiency. Now, uh, we're going to skip this particular uh, slide uh, explanation, but again, if you want to pause and take a look at it, go for it. Efficiency. This is an important concept, something we've seen before. Now, when we relate it to energy, the energy that we get out of the system compared to the energy we put into a system is, is it considered its efficiency. So, for example, it takes 100 joules, uh, if it takes 100 joules of, of energy to move a car a certain distance, uh, but only 30 joules of that is actually used in moving that distance, uh, whereas the other 70 are used for a variety of other things, such as sound, heat, uh, or other undesirable forms of energy. That's 30 over 100. So 30 on the E out over 100 on the E in would be 30, uh, 0.3, excuse me, and that would be 30%. We would usually express that efficiency as a percentage. Uh, you'll also see in the activity that the power out over the power in is also efficiency. Efficiency can be written in a few different ways. We've also seen it as AMA over IMA. Now, um, we're going to leave that slide up there. We talked about this before, but I'll leave this here. And now let's talk about power. 
power is the rate at which energy is expended over time. So we would express power as energy over time or work over time, either of which are acceptable. Uh, the symbol for power is the watt. One watt is equal to one joule per second. So think of it as its velocity. It's the velocity of work or force in that case. Now, we've talked about electrical power, mechanical power, and fluid power. Uh, we'll talk about fluid power in a future unit, but mechanical and electrical power are kind of the things that we've talked about. Linear rotary motion, electrical energy, or power from a battery. Uh, those are all examples of power from a light bulb. Uh, here's an example of power uh, numerically, right? So remember that it's 271 joules to move this ball four feet in five seconds due to the conversions we saw. But now, if we consider how much power was used, we would just take the amount of work we did and divide it by the time that we applied that work. So 271 joules over five seconds would be 54.3 joules per second or 54.3 watts. So that's it. That's the particular presentation. We'll talk about the actual activity uh, in, a, uh, in class.